anti afro spin gollies i didn't want too much time to go by without doing this video because i think we're coming on almost a week let me see your handcuffs is up to her calculating bullshit and i wanted to get right down to business look here on the screen she posted this it was a photograph that went with a live stream and i believe it was last saturday i'm gonna come back and tell you what's going on stay tuned and i will return we have a special dirty dining report to tell you about tonight a local sonic drive-in shut down last week after the state finds more than 55 dead roaches near the food you eat inspectors temporarily closing the local sonic on commercial way in spring hill after seeing those roaches crawling under the soft serve ice cream machine near the storage shelf prep table cooler and front desk on june 15th inspectors also discovered mold in the ice machine and ice chute along with duct tape issuing a stop sale on all the ice served to customers i spoke to jason acock manager of communications at sonic's corporate office this afternoon he told me he'd send a statement explaining what happened but he never did i also called the restaurant multiple times tonight but no one answered okay so you read on the screen so what I want to do, I want to first tell you what I have an issue with. A lot, of, a lot of issues with what's on the screen here. So what you have here is an effort to convince you to look at, let me see your handcuffs in a certain way according to what's happening. But there's a problem, first and foremost, with the photo. The photo doesn't match the words. So let me help you all out. If Let me see your handcuffs. Wanted to get off to the right start. This would have been more of an appropriate photo. Don't you think, people? I also want to point out something else. Let me see your handcuffs didn't cam up. So how do we know she was crying? We don't know whether she was crying, but she certainly wanted us to think she was crying. We're going to go with let me see your handcuffs crying. And I want to talk to you about tears. And I'm going to do something that I have never done. I'm going to bring you into the world of family therapy. Oh, let me sidetrack for a second. This is a great opportunity to respond to some very humorous or I'd say hilarious comments that I've heard over the years. Oh my God. Who in the heck or hell or whatever they say would take advice from her. Well, if somebody wants to give a critique or an evaluation of anything, it would help to have the proper standard. So let me make it clear. Therapy is not advice. So the comment is not even applicable. Therapy is treatment. Let's get back to the content. I have noticed something about several parents in these YouTube streets, and I'm going to capitalize on something that I find is very impressive with several of you parents. I'm not going to call any names. I don't want to embarrass any of you. And I always chuckle when I hear several of you parents. Of course, I'm talking about Gerald, but I'm talking about several other people out there who I know are parents. And no, I'm not just talking about people. In Gerald's live stream, I'm talking about folks who are parents across these YouTube streets in these particular YouTube blocks. When F shit is going on and they're addressing people acting the fool. Now, let me tell you what I mean. When people are crying in this profession, that's not always a good thing. That's not always a time to retreat. When I say retreat, that's not always a time for the professional to retreat. A lot of times, it's a signal to charge forward. Now, let me give you an example. And I'm signaling this to the parents out there because this is the part of family therapy where you capitalize the most because it's about the strength of the parents. That's the key in family therapy. It's not the key 
of the therapist is the, the parent holds the key. See, that's the one thing that I wanted to point out about Dempsey because he doesn't know what he's doing. He tells you all that he's the expert. No, wrong. The parent is the expert. And when the parent comes in, the parent is hopeless. The parent is frustrated. And a lot of times the parent is crying, which is the reason why you never bring the child into the first session if the child is the primary client. So if the child is the primary client, you always bring the parent or parents into the first session because you need to gather information about the child's history. In addition to the primary reason, a lot of times the parents are in total breakdown mode in tears, frustrated, because you got a four-year-old, you got a 10-year-old, you got a 15-year-old, you got an 11-year-old running the show. That's just what it is. So in those instances, and I'm using a parallel with those limits of your handcuffs, crying, we're gonna act like it's true. You can't do anything. If somebody is up here crying, and defeated and they want you to feel sorry for them you can't really get anything done in therapy if somebody wants you to feel sorry for them oh and you better believe she kicked it in she kicked it in <sighs> heavy for me and it doesn't help that you know i got stalkers people doxing me calling my job or people accusing me of doxing them, or calling CPS, or calling police reports, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and all other stuff, you know. I'm friendly, I like people, I like going to different chats and stuff, but then it's hard when you go there and people want to ask you about other stuff. Why you get kicked out, or why did you leave, or when you gonna talk about this, sir? Uh, I don't know. It's just frustrating. People think I'm messy. And then when I do non messy stuff, I don't get nobody to come over here to watch it. But, you know, the faithful ones, thank you. I appreciate it. What the hell does this have to do with supposedly grieving family members? Do you see the calculation, people? This is pure calculation so hats off to your parents out there who listen to folks in these youtube streets engaging in this effery and you call them out because i hear the parent chip kicking in and that's what let me see your handcuffs is doing she's throwing tears up here and wants you to retreat no you got to charge forward and this is what we tell these parents they're anxious for you to bring their child in because they think you as a therapist you're going to get this kid in order but you got to turn it back on them reinstill confidence they're the ones that have all the keys because they know their kid yes we have the treatment interventions but we can't do it without the parent how the heck are you going to do something without a parent that you don't even know the kid you haven't even met the kid and the parent, here's, here's a very interesting thing. The parents will say, my kid's really going to like you. There you go. They know their kid. And then other times, they're scared. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is like, oh. Because that kid has this parent so terrified. And then you go, you know, oh, it's going to be fine. Don't even worry about it. Either way it goes, that parent walks out of there feeling a hell of a lot better compared to when they walked in. You got to instill hope. So here you have, let me see your handcuffs as this honorary child wielding all of these calculating bullshit tactics. Thinking she can back people off and keep up with this shit that she's been doing for how long? The year before last, what was Limousy Your Handcuffs doing? Causing trouble. 
In 2020, what was, let me see your handcuffs doing? Do you remember George Floyd died in 2020? What was it, May 2020? Remember she said, if you're lying, bad enough for me. Well, remember George Floyd died and all of this activism was going on and let me see your handcuffs had been harassing, breaking the culture of silence, had been doing that for quite a while and breaking the culture of silence had hit up that anti-racism community service board and this was moving into July, May, because he died, what, end of May, June, July. She wasn't crying. <laughs> she was harassing, breaking the culture of silence. As a result of harassing, breaking the culture of silence, racially harassing, breaking the culture of silence. This is supposed to be a public servant. Let me see your handcuffs was kicked off of that board for harassing racially harassing, breaking the culture of silence, and a few other folks. Booted. Let, let me see your handcuffs get her ass up here and deny she was kicked off because the meeting was recorded with permission and I have the full meeting. The woman was trying to organize George Floyd protest and had to deal with, let me see your handcuffs and her race attacks. And she was laughing. She enjoyed harassing breaking the culture of silence. She absolutely was not suffering. She was enjoying herself, working with the against the law team, running all around, harassing all kinds of people, talking shit about Mookie, teasing people for their, about their disabilities. And listen, the aunt that she said that she uh, passed away this is the same aunt that she was being mean to. She was talking shit about her online. And now she says she misses her. She's up here telling you that she's... What is this? These are calculating tactics, people. If Let me see your handcuffs really was feeling so bad about all these things. What is the reason that she didn't do a members only? If this was so important and she wanted a cocoon of support, of intimate support, what is the reason she didn't do a members only? She was doing members only when it came to selling text messages and emails. Why didn't she do it with this? Because she's trying to be what she always is on a grand scale. She's trying to get people to say, anti has been calling so mean. Hey, look what she's doing, too. Let me see your handcuffs. She's got relatives that die as a therapist, and she's so mean. That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to make it appear that she's being beat up because she's throwing around. She's going to the cemetery. She's digging up the bones, and she's beating us over the head with the bones. That's what she's doing. And she's expecting us to have sympathy with the bones of her relatives. She's like Umar Johnson, graveyard humping. Remember this? Stop it. Let me see your handcuffs. Nobody's buying this. You cannot do what you were doing without your ass being called out. I don't know what's happening with your brother. What the heck? Black men, right? Anybody know any black men having problems here in the United States? Why is your brother any more special than our male relatives? You're full of it. Get your ass in the members only. Like you did with those emails that you sold. To buy me a coffee. And YouTube. Where you got dinged for privacy violations. You're so full of it. You know you're in trouble because law enforcement came knocking on your door. The Harris County Sheriff's right. Why don't you talk about how that stressed you out? And you don't even know what's coming down the pike. Let me see your handcuffs. People, I will be making the announcement. Let me see your handcuffs is in serious trouble. And she's trying to garner sympathy because she doesn't even know 
what's coming next for her. She knows she's in trouble, but there's more coming. You do not deserve sympathy for what you did. You came after little babies. Babies. You know what you did and you're up here lying like you're innocent and you're bringing up relatives. You're digging up relatives bones and you're beating us over the head with the dry bones. You're deplorable. Nobody should be feeling sorry for you. You harassed children. Your relatives are deceased. These children are living, feeling pain for what you did. And you did it more than once. You deliberately try to separate a family. But there's more coming. You do not deserve sympathy for what you did. You wanted to cause destruction. You wanted to cause fear. And you want people to feel sorry for you because relatives have died. Set you apart from other people's relatives who passed away. You're not set apart. You're conniving, you're treacherous, you're cruel and abusive. You deserve everything coming to you. Absolutely do. And I will be here to report on it. In the meantime, let me see your handcuffs. Better be on notice. Your grave humping routine did not work. Ordinary life events that occur just how they occur for everybody else, not going to be able to be used to shut people up, to stop people from telling the truth about all the shit that you've done. People, don't let, let me see your handcuffs, play you for a fool. She is the only fool who thinks that people are going to shut up about all the shit that she did. There's so much more to come. In the meantime, you know the drill. Fire, beware.